heading up to the Bronx to check out a piece of New York history. So I'm in the Bronx. Now I'm walking over to what's called the High Bridge, which is the oldest bridge in New York. It's kind of a cloudy day. It's not too cold though. Didn't have anything going on, so I needed to fill the time. Getting some shoots in. It's a pretty good uphill here. So this is the High Bridge. It's part of the Croton Aqueduct, originally built in 1848. In the 20th century, they replaced the middle part with a steel span so that more ships could get under it. But the bridge is still here, and it's the oldest bridge in New York. Like I said, I'm in the Bronx now. I'm starting in the Bronx here, but I won't be in the Bronx for long. The bridge crosses over between the Bronx and Manhattan, so we're gonna go ahead and walk over. <music> On the other side, you also see a water tower that was part of this original aqueduct system back in the late 1840s. That's not in use anymore. There was also a reservoir up on top of that hill, also not in use anymore, but it's all over there. And this is spanning over the Harlem River, which is what's down there, which is in between the Bronx and Manhattan. This is actually not a short walk across this bridge. Kind of surprising. It is a long and high bridge. As usual, you can't really see the bridge when you're on it. Now we're out past the arch part of it that's by the Bronx, and we're over on the steel span that's in the middle of the Harlem River. So the bridge was closed sometime between 1960 and 1970. Records aren't really sure when. Part of the reason was the city was running out of funds to take care of stuff like this, and other things started happening. Like I think at one point in the 1960s, people were throwing bricks off the bridge, and someone got hurt or killed on one of the Circle Line cruises as it was going under the bridge. So that help them close it at the time. In 2009, they started restoring it, and then in 2015, it was finally opened again for the public. And here we are. It's nice. All right, welcome to Manhattan. Now I realize I had a better view on the other side. You can see on the Bronx side, you got the arch spans that are still there. Those used to go all the way across. Now on the Manhattan side, as of 1928, I believe it was, they replaced the arch spans in the middle of the river with this uh, steel arch structure. So now of the original masonry arches that were there, you've only got nine left on the Bronx side and there's only one left on the Manhattan side. All right, let's go up and see if we can get nearer to the tower. It's a lot of stairs again. I feel the burn in my quads. It's nice. Like I said, the high bridge was part of the Croton Aqueduct system to bring fresh water in for the city of New York. And the tower was part of that system too. It was built up increased water pressure because of the need of higher water pressure because everyone started using flushing toilets about that time. Right next to the tower, we have what's called the reservoir. And this was where they stored water that came in on the Croton Aqueduct. It's no longer a reservoir, now it's a pool. 
as part of this whole park system. But this was all part of the Croton Aqueduct Waterworks system. <laughs> I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to the pool at first. I just stopped to look at it for a second. Man, that is a big pool. So up by the pool up here after climbing all those steps over there. Now I'm by this part of the park, but I don't think there's really anything else up here. There's a path that runs down where the stairs started along the river and out over there somewhere. And that may be more interesting. So I think I need to go back down the stairs and then walk that way along that path. So let's do that. It's funny because when I was on the bus heading to Fort Triton Park, we went along that road right down there, which I guess is the Harlem River Drive, and I saw this tower up on the hill, and I was thinking, I wonder what that is. And then as I was getting ready to come out here, I realized, oh, that's what it is. It's even in the opening shots of the Fort Triton video, bringing it all together, you know. Nice little path, a little trash here and there, but picturesque nonetheless. It's another one of those off trails. Nothing good can probably come of this, but oh well. It's all right. Nothing like slippery rocks on the edge of a cliff. No, that's not too bad. Really what I try not to find is homeless encampments. It looks like they have been here, but I don't see anyone here now, so this is nice. And there's our bridge. All right, back to the real trail. On the way off that trail, I stepped in a huge pile of something that I think was mud, but there are always other options, you know. I've recently seen stuff floating around on the internet about how these tags can tell you where you are on the lamppost in Central Park. And it looks like they might work up here too, because the, the center number is supposed to be the closest cross street. And this says 168, which is about right. We should be at about 168th Street up here. I've yet to try it actually in Central Park, but pretty cool. The paved path goes up that way, and now it turns into dirt going this way. So we'll see. Nah, my sense of adventure is fading. I'm gonna head back to the paved path. This doesn't look like it really does much. Some basketball courts, racquetball, wall ball, I don't know what it's called. Nice little workout area, kinda nice. This all looks pretty new too. Kind of smells like pee, but I mean, you can't have everything, I guess. And it looks like there's even a new playground coming. Nice. Now I'm out and walking back toward the subway. Nice little trip. Cool bridge. High bridge. used to seeing gas stations anymore. There just aren't that many of them in Manhattan.
Well, that's a nice little trip. Another day, another adventure. Now I'm back up to the east side. Seems a lot gloomier outside now than it did. Time to grab some lunch. I'll see you next time.